Looking first at the Irish Independent. Messi, too hot to handle. No happy return for Solskjaer as United have no answer to genius of Barca talisman. Martin Brehney is an interesting article inside. When players walk away from the championship, alarm bells should be ringing. That's about Oren McNeilis. We talk about that. Uh, Lee Keegan was doing the rounds yesterday. GEA should be more like rugby. Lee Keegan has lashed out at drinks bans and the attitude towards alcohol in the GEA, with the Mayo star insisting that players would be better served if they were shown more trust and leniency. The former Football of the Year stressed the need for a culture change within the GEA to allow for more balance between football and life away from the pitch, like many professional athletes. And Stuart Lancaster says Leinster will need Sean O'Brien at his best for their semi-final against Toulouse on Sunday. Of course, the front pages also dominated by sport and by the FAI as well. End of the old FAI. The threat of prosecution hangs over FAI directors and John Delaney amid serious allegations of financial irregularity at the organisation. The FAI engulfed in the biggest crisis in its history with the entire board preparing to step down. So we'll get into that a little bit later on. Yeah, so what we have here is the Irish Daily Mail and the first one is Easy Money, which again, touching on Delaney and the FAI. Um, Delaney's still on the payroll. The FAI, as crisis deepens, I suppose, it's just an ongoing saga with the FAI and just continuing that this has not been resolved in any way. Um, next one is the Barca line, which is Barca are too classy for United. Um, Again, that just states it all. An uh, inspired Lionel Messi ripped Manchester United apart last night as Barcelona coasted through the Champions League semi-finals. It says everything really. They were the better side all over and Messi was just on top throughout the whole game and mm. once again showed his class. Um, and then the top of it here is we've got Tiger roaring to Augusta again and a major reality check for Rory, which is, I suppose, puts it... it Rory, there was a lot of pressure on him going to the tournament, and he felt confident going into. But Rory coming back in such, oh, with Tiger coming back in such a way that he did, it's caused a shadow on him because he needs to kind of produce a big tournament win, doesn't he? Yeah, the papers have had two days of celebrating mm -hmm. Tiger. Now there's a bit more analysis of what went wrong for Rory McIlroy in his chase for the Grand Slam. Uh, so we'll chat about that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, Sun Sport. Uh, it's all a mess, really. Um, we have United are lifting a total messy, and uh, yeah. The FAI are lifting a total Messi as well, <laughs> but uh, it's yeah. Is that your headline or their headline? Well, it's it's they forgot the eye. They just said total miss. <laughs> so I threw in the threw in the eye. But like speaking on the Barca and United game, like Barca were poor at Old Trafford. Really, when you when when, when you looked at the game, they still managed to win one nil. Um, and they're still they're so dangerous. They're so dangerous to any, to any team going forward. And just a, a small thing, fans get the pep talk. So. Maybe a slight chink in the armour of City that, that their manager is out there kind of going, let's go fans, we need you to get behind us tonight. I saw that. Yeah, it's, it's so they have, uh, they've done the old put flags on every seat. Yeah. Yeah, and he, he's, he's come out and said, hasn't he? He wants them to be, can they be as good as what they are away, which is... Yeah, because uh, they've, they've been getting stick because, like, you know, obviously they're going for this title, especially in, in the Premiership with Liverpool, who have probably the best home support yeah. and, 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 and crowds at games. But, you know, I think we saw in, in a City game where there was nobody... Mm. There were people leaving, there was people nobody had to give loads of empty seats in a big in a big game that they needed to win. So yeah, it's uh it's it's interesting that, that Pep is getting out there and getting after the fans. I think they've always had tried to find that because since they moved to the new stadium, it's such a big venue and it's so far away from the pitch, it's a hard to create mm. that kind of closer to Anfield, you're on top of it. Yeah. It's easy not easy, but you know, obviously the fans are amazing, but it's it's a much easier way to try to create an atmosphere where yeah. the city is so vast and so spread out, it's difficult. And they also still have their hardcore fan base. Yeah. You'd imagine that as they're more and more successful that the worldwide fan base will grow, but that's a slow process. So right now like they get a lot of stick for not filling the ground, yeah. whereas actually it's very, it, it's still the same Mancunians who are going along who simply can't afford to of go course, to the yeah. amount of games that Manchester City are playing. Yeah. Uh, the Hurled, messy magic, they're keeping it simple. Barca proved too strong as United crash out. John Aldridge says Poole have class to finish off Porto, while Aidan Fitzmaurice has the story no more cash for FAI until board go. The FAI have been told to make complete changes to their structure before they are allowed access to state funding, but they're no closer to cutting their ties completely with their ex CEO after it was revealed that John Delaney was on gardening leave. And the Irish Times, just on the front page of the Irish Times, FAI investigation could lead to prosecutions, criminal sanctions possible if investigation into claims finds any wrongdoing. So Aaron Shearer will be with us in around an hour from now and we'll get into that. The sports section, Messi makes all the difference as United are left down and out. Yeah, so I have the Daily Star here and it's again all about Messi. New Chance <coughs> is the headline and it's Lionel of Messi tortured Manchester United as Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's side were dumped out of the Champions League. Um, just 
going on again about how good they were and Messi is brilliant. And the top of it here, it says Klopp seeking cool heads. So Jurgen Klopp called for cool heads in the red hot atmosphere at SCL de Drago tonight. So Klopp just looking for his team to go out and perform. You know, they're already going there with a 2 0 lead. They need to just, just have get cool a goal. heads. Yeah, get a goal, be confident, defend well, which I'm sure Van Dijk is going to be capable of. And yeah. then they'll see it through to the semis. And then in the corner, they have a sign of the times here, which is Pochettino, the picture perfect. I think they're just given a few things, an old picture of um, Pochettino from when he played in the mm. heyday and uh, just trying to you know, emphasise the game coming up. Yeah, uh, the mirror sport goes with oh no. Uh, obviously, look. Oh no. Well, whatever <laughs> way you want to say it, it was oh no when I was watching it last night. <laughs> because I felt for the, uh, for the game, because, you know, it's, it's, it's the biggest stage of all. You know, he's obviously one of the best keepers in the world. I think he actually switched off mentally when he saw Messi didn't like his you're, you're in goals I just put myself in it last night when I was looking at the replay and you see Messi coming through and you're going this fella's going to unleash it yeah. into the top corner so you're psyching yourself up for everything and next thing he kind of dribbles one along the ground now there was pace in it and it's cutting across the surface mm. but I think he just started kind of switching off in it when he fell down in it uh, which was tough I, 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 felt, I felt for him last night because on the biggest stage you you just don't want to see mistakes like that really it was making like a lot of mistakes in the biggest stage he is yeah it's back to the World Cup last summer he's been so good for United and, and, and so consistently so then when he happens on this on a big occasion it's so it's hard for him to take but man you put so much pressure on him as well if you make a mistake it's like it's like even if I made a mistake at full forward nobody really noticed because nothing really happened to him long mm. but if the full back made a mistake or the goalie makes a mistake <laughs> or if <laughs> no, the left back no, makes no, a mistake no, and the right no. winger goes in and sl yeah. slats one you have very little room the keeper gets you know even the Liverpool keeper last year in the Champions League final like it's that one one mistake you're just hoping that the, that hoping against and then at the bottom of it's another day another FAI miss so uh, more more drama and that and there's also the, the one I saw last night which is on the Scholes Paul Scholes bet, bet probe shocker mm. oh yeah yeah, the bets are from 2015. I don't think he was 2016. I don't think he was. Was he playing? I don't think. I he think was. it was due to the fact that he was involved. Yeah, he was still involved with Salford. So as as an yeah. owner of the club, technically, <laughs> if you're involved in football Sorry. at any level, you're yeah, uh, yeah, you're not allowed. Um, so he's obviously going to have some questions to answer around that. Yeah. Uh, the front page of the Guardian is. On their knees, magical Messi and De Gea's blunder leaves United humbled. Conor Murray interview as well in The Guardian with Donald McRae. It would be incredible on how Munster can save their season this Saturday away at Saracens. And Delict for Ajax, teenage captain leads Dutch side to last four as Ronaldo and Juventus crash out. We will marvel at what Ajax have been doing uh, in a little while. And The Telegraph, Barca masterclass, the pictures of Lionel Messi and Philippe Coutinho. Uh, Messi's brilliance somewhat overshadowing everything else good that Barcelona did. It was another wonder goal from Philippe Coutinho. It's had a bit of a struggle at Barcelona, but tends to turn it on on the biggest games. Yeah, you see a celebration as well, his fingers in his ears. So yeah, he's obviously been getting a bit of stick there. He's in, like I said, at Liverpool, he was fantastic, wasn't he? He was nice. so good for them. He, mm, was, he was their talisman and he led to everything. So for him to be going over there and not perform as high as what he probably liked to be is disappointing. But when you go to a team like that and you've got someone like Messi and you're always going to be overshadowed. Always. And you've got Suarez yeah. up there yeah. as well. It's, it's, yeah, it's hard to... It's hard to be, especially because he was such a magical player with Liverpool because he was the most kind of skillful yeah, guy. And then he goes over here, and everybody is, yeah. you know, has that. Most fellas have that skill level, but he is he is a special player, and uh, good to see him get on the score sheet last night. The Times Ireland are mad defy training ban rule and Horn keeping Mayo old dogs fresh. Also, you see up there, FAI board to step down as crisis deepens. Uh, I imagine Armagh won't be the only ones to defy the training ground rule. Yeah, I'd say most uh, counties are probably doing the Tuesday training session, I would say. Most? Most such as <laughs> which, Kieran? What do you know? I, I would presume most would train what do you Tuesday know? with Kerry. I just, I'm just i going back to when I was playing, which is... Last year. Donkeys years ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure they kind of get together, on a, get together on a Tuesday and get that hard session and let the, let the boys back into the clubs for the, the Thursday. Probably. And that's not allowed at all, under the rules? Under the rules, yeah. But you're under the rules, there's no football going on in December either, mm. apparently, and there's always pre-season going on. And, and there was no punishment for Kerry for that? As you say, every county was doing it. Yeah, I presume every county is doing it, yeah. I presume so. 
I just think we need a, Did we train the truth? I think we need a thorough investigation. <laughs> and may, uh, no. Maybe some bands for the summer out of this. <laughs> Let's get the Oroctus in again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow. You've admitted to it. You've admitted to it, to it. You've admitted to it now. Thank you, for the summer. There'll be no comeback, that's for sure. Yeah, I better go back and check that. I'm, I always thought we trained on the Tuesday and then went back to the clubs on the Thursday. <laughs> that could be... No, I'm pretty sure that's the case. And uh, finally, the Irish News, Downs, Quaylon Mooney says, Down are underdogs for Ulster Clash. Uh, this is already the build-up beginning to the championship in Ulster. Down are taking on Armagh, is it, in the first round? So they're going to be underdogs to Armagh. That, that's, there's a bit of honesty in that, isn't there? There is, yeah. They'll be, yeah, they'll be, they'll be underdogs against Armagh, but that's a game that's... Pff, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be putting my money either way because it'll be two teams that'll be out of their mind for the first round of the championship. It'll, probably, it'll be on TV. It's a big mm. game. Downer, traditionally, very good on, on, on big days and... Armagh, even though they're building very well under Kieran McGeaney, they aren't, they aren't bulletproof to down, giving them a, sh a shock in the day and beating them. So I expect that to be a tight one. Did you ever play a game where you weren't able to talk up the opponents? Uh, like, if you were still playing this Kieran, year, we can you know, always Cork, talk up Cork, the opponents. Cork, Cork, you know, Cork are ticking along, proud county. That's what we'll be hearing from Kerry this year. Yeah, do you know why that is? Because if you're going into a Munster final with Cork and it's on below in Parky Cueve, <laughs> and if you get beaten which we have a lot of times below. Uh, granted, they were a better team back then, but geez, you get a lot of stick in Kerry after losing the cock in the game. So we're always saying that, to, I'd say, not to be cute Kerry whorism and kind of uh, put, taking the pressure off ourselves and building up cock, but it's just building up cock to maybe keep ourselves and our own squad members right. on our toes that hey, if we lose this, we'll, we're going to get it in the neck. All right, so the main stories in the papers today, obviously, as we've seen, front and back is what's happening in the FAI. And it's been a pretty remarkable month at this stage since these revelations of the €100,000 bridging loan came out. But the last 24 hours, I think, uh, is just incredible what we've been hearing from the FAI. We've seen over the last 24 hours that their auditors, Deloitte, have reported the company for failing to keep proper accounting records, which is a potential criminal threat, we a criminal offence. We have seen the entire FAI board say that they are going to resign probably in July, unless an EGM is called before then, and that is up to the council members, people at grassroots level in Irish football, if they want to put the pressure on to have an invest to have a EGM before then. The way Shane Ross and Sport Ireland were talking yesterday, maybe they feel that they should wait until July so that they have as many of these reports completed and that they're going into an EGM with a good sense of where everybody is, because I think if some of these board members uh, rightly will feel that they can go for re-election. It's not going to be an absolute clean sweep, it seems, of the FAI, unless there is no FAI, which is something that Niall Quinn is in today's paper, suggesting that, much like the Olympic Council, that there is a clean sweep, that the FAI is such a tarnished brand now that we look at just reinventing the whole thing and you come back with... Football Ireland yeah. or Soccer Ireland or whatever a new name is, but that it's a new, fresh brand that really does see a new start for Irish football. Yeah, Where well, do you stand on it, Stephen? I suppose with the rebranding, it kind of makes sense when you see what happened with the Olympic Council. Mm -hmm. It did just kind of change everything, and now it's like it seems to be rosy, and for sponsorship, it'll make it that will make a difference, I think, because going forward, you don't want to be associated with something that's tarnished. You want yeah. to be with something that's new and fresh, and that's has got you know a good way about it so that that could be the way forward but you know this is dragged on i think everybody knew from the moment that there was trying to get a high court injunction against 100,000 that that was open up a can of worms because you don't stop that if that's all it was, was yeah. and there was obviously something mm. else that was going to happen so as soon as that happened you knew that there was going to be just going to dig and dig a hole that's going to get further and further and that's what's been it's been so disappointing like being involved with ireland since i was 15 and with the fai and they've been my I suppose the club I've been with, if you use it as a club term, it's been mm. the club with the longest time, so I'd know more people in there. And it's just so disappointing to see association that's done so well for me over the years and that I've been a part of um, football since that it's just gone down a hole now. And at the moment, it looks like it's going to have to clear everything out for it and start again, which is the way to go forward. But it's just disappointing that they've got themselves in this position.